You're probably thinking, great, another generic grandparent documentary film thing. Yeah. But I miss her, and I've found myself thinking about her quite a lot recently. And I think films like these are just a great way of preserving her in a way. A great way for others to meet her too. So let me introduce you. This is Nanny. Youngest of three with older brothers, Steve and Fred. Born 1st of July, 1945. I don't know too much about her childhood, only what I've been told when searching for this material. In a way, we're kind of both learning about her here. Some of these photos I'm actually seeing for the very first time. It was her dedication to Poppy, to my dad, to my uncle Ben, just to her entire family that made her one of the most influential people in my life. She was a keen reader and she enjoyed the simple, quiet things in life like a regular trip to the library. In 1972, Nanny brings into the world the absolute best man I know, Dad. And exactly 30 years later, I come along. Two years later, my sister Caitlin is born, and a few years after, my cousin Cameron. Prematurely, too. He's gone through a few rough times, for sure, but Nanny was there through it all. She didn't even need to be asked. We lived four hours up the coast in a small town called Port Macquarie, but we'd visit as often as possible. She was funny. Every time she came up to visit, it always involved packing the car with cleaning products and wipes. She even delegated inside and outside shoes for Poppy. Having grandchildren brought Nanny so much pride and joy. There are countless memories I have of her always being available for us. She was always so excited to hear about what I did at school that day or what song I just learned on piano. She was a very small woman, but man, she had a big heart and a lot of courage as it turns out. In 2017, she went to the doctors with a sore hip and after a few hours, she walks out knowing she has multiple myeloma cancer. She'd beaten bowel cancer before and liver cancer too, but this one hit harder. Her body started shutting down. She was the very glue that held our entire family together and now she only had a few years left. I remember at the end of 2019, my family and I stood in her living room watching this poor frail woman stand up to give us all a hug. We all treated it as a regular goodbye, but every single person in that room knew it would be our last. Those last few years were the closest our family's ever been. We all stayed strong just like she had, and she passed on the 12th of January 2020. But it was her courage throughout these years that I think impacted me the most in terms of who I am as a person. Her strength was inspiring.